We welcome those of you who are watching on ESPNU to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. It is homecoming night for the number two Crimson Tide, hosting Vanderbilt tonight. The Tide went three and out on their opening series, and now Vanderbilt has a third down and eight situation as you look at their starting quarterback, Larry Smith. Smith throws to the outside, incomplete. And that vaunted Bama defense will force a punt. Mark Barron on the coverage, Jonathan Cross, the intended receiver. Mark Barron is such a versatile player in this Alabama defense. You're going to see him. He's right here playing man to man coverage. He's got the receiver any which way he goes. And he comes in and comes out. And see the closing speed that Barron has, just able to get a hand on that football. But Mark Barron, the versatility for him to play in the deep middle and read and react to deep, but then also to come up play man to man. He's an NFL style safety. Two time All American. Richard Kent, the punt. Marquise Mays. Well covered. And Bama will start from the 22 on their second series. I would take a look at the impact players uh, presented by Lee Jeans here. And Trent Richardson is uh, the man that makes this offense go. Last week, 29 carries the most in his career. And uh, they put the offensive workload on his shoulders. He can handle it. And the guy up front, Chance Warmack, these guys, you got to give them some love every now and then. The offensive <laughs> linemen, they're the ones that make it make it go for Trent Richardson and Chris Marv is going to have his hands full on defense today for Vanderbilt but he is the unquestioned leader in the middle from the 23 yard line A.J. McCarron and the Crimson Tide offense go back to work three and out on their first series play action McCarron has a ton of time now goes to his check down receiver which is Richardson and he'll get a couple, maybe three. Uncovered on the perimeter, T.J. Greenstone, the defensive tackle, got out there to make the stop. Second down and eight. Interesting to see tonight, first down, how Alabama, whether they choose to run the ball or throw it. Last week, they mixed it very well against Florida. It was very effective for them. They're going with an up-tempo here, Clay. They're going no huddle, which is different for Alabama, not something that they typically have done so far this season. I think they're trying this out. See if A.J. McCarron and this offense can handle it. The offensive coordinator is Jim McElwain, now in his fourth year on the job and doing a wonderful job at that. Here's Richardson. Penalty flags down as he crosses the 25-yard line. Archie Barnes was there to make the stop. We'll see what the penalty's about. Penn Wagers is our referee. And it's a holding call on Bama. And we have not seen a lot of penalties from this team this year. No, we haven't. They've only had uh, three penalties on average per year. And uh, Nick Saban has been a very disciplined with his Holding. football team. Number 75 on the offense. Penalty decline. Third down. And that's Barrett Jones, the All-American O-lineman. You see uh, Barrett Jones, number 75 in red. He just gets beat to the inside by Rob Lohr. And you see him pull uh, Lohr down from behind. Good, good call. This One. defensive front play, sorry, I mean, yeah. this defensive front for Vanderbilt, while they're not big and physical, they are very quick, very smart and talented, and they get off the ball in a hurry. And they stay fresh, too. They rotate nine guys up there. McCarron to throw over the middle, has a receiver. It's caught by Hanks. Darius Hanks, who sat out the first couple of weeks to comply with the NCAA red shirt rule, gives Alabama a first down. What a great pickup on the inside of this uh, Alabama offensive line. They're going to bring a blitz both in the A gap with a twist around. And you see the center Vallejo 73 with a great job picking. That is not an easy blitz to handle. This is a veteran offensive line. They've got four starters returning 101 starts between the four of them. So but Vallejo's right there 73. He is the leader. There's your Vanderbilt injury. It's Tim Fuger. He is up to his feet. We'll step aside. No score here in Tuscaloosa. This is ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by Five Hour Energy. Homecoming night in Tuscaloosa. No score. 10.52 to go. Opening quarter. Alabama's got the football first down at 10 at their own 38. Tim Fuger 
shaken up on that last play for Vanderbilt. Over on the sidelines being checked out. Got the Wildcat here, McCarron down to the bottom of the screen. Favorite formation of Alabama. Richardson gets the direct snap, goes straight ahead. And stood up at the 40-yard line and pushed back by Chris Marv. We saw Richardson doing that a little bit in the game last week against Florida. He's such a talented player, and if you can get him the football quicker and with a lead blocker and take a quarterback out of the formation and occupy a defender, that's an advantage for the offense, and that's what Jim McElwain likes to do with Trent Richardson. He has really picked up speed when it comes to the Heisman conversation. He'll line up to the bottom of your screen now as a wide receiver. On second down and eight, McCarron. Coxon fires over the middle, completes to Hanks. Gets away from a tackle and into plus territory. Down at the 41. Andre Hal makes the stop, but it's a gain of 19 and a first down. Hanks is a guy they would really like to get involved in this offense. Marquise Mays is their go-to receiver, but they need a complimentary receiver to Mays. And Hanks has got to be that guy. He's got the hands. He's got the ability to run good routes. Now he just needs to start making more plays. Now John L. Thomas, defensive end for Vanderbilt, is slow to get up. Talked about Mandy rotating a lot of guys up there, but they're going to get shorthanded quickly if this keeps up. Yeah, depth is an issue for Vanderbilt, and uh, now losing two guys on one drive. I know they like to play a lot of guys on the defensive front, but not a lot of depth on that defensive line. There's Hanks. Three catches already for 38 yards. Yeah, you talked about it, Brian. This offense is looking for a spark in the receiving core. Yeah, last week against the Florida, they targeted uh, the receivers only five times they, they caught the football. They need more production from the position. McCarron to the flat. This is DeAndre White. And Hal makes the tackle. DeAndre White with the catch. It'll bring up second down after a gain of eight. White's one of those players, Clay. The coaches are really excited about just a red shirt freshman. He's got good size, six feet tall, 180 pounds. The question with him is can he get off the line of scrimmage against bump and run defenses? Second down and two to Richardson. Big hole up the middle. Down to the 14 yard line. And Trent Richardson is one bad dude, averaging 124 yards per game. This offensive line exerting their will early on. The center, Vlahos, right guard, Steen. This is what they did to Florida a week ago and the continuing uh, their prowess on the offensive line against Vanderbilt. Karen says it's going to go against Vandy. Looks like Alabama may have been drawn off, but you see on this drive play that the play calling by Jim McElwing, throwing the ball on first down, has loosened up Vanderbilt defensively and allowed them to crack a big run with Richardson. That kind of balance is what Nick Saban really wants from his offense. Outside on the defense, five yard penalty. That's on Archie Barnes. Look at the blocking up front, Lejos, and then Steen gets on the linebacker. And when you get Trent Richardson to the second level, look out. I'm surprised he didn't take that to the house. He's got great speed and the power to run over secondary players. Last week, a career high, 181 yards and two touchdowns. His fourth straight 100-yard rushing game. Gave a lot of credit to that O-line after the game last week. McCarron lobs it up toward the corner of the end zone. Incomplete. Hanks, the intended receiver. And Hayward, who's had a great year for Vanderbilt in the secondary, in on the cover. It's interesting. You know, you come down here in the red zone, you throw the ball on first down. I think Jim McElwain really wants to get A.J. McCarron's confidence level up in a game like this. And they certainly could turn around and hand the ball to Trent Richardson three times down here and probably score. But I think they're looking at the bigger picture here. They want to get this offense a, a broader sense and more balance and A.J. McCarron's confidence a big part of it. On second down and five they can pick up a first down at the three. And Richardson stacked up by Garnham. 
who's back in his home state tonight, the strong side linebacker. One of six Alabama natives starting for Vandy in this game. Vanderbilt comes into this game only giving up 15 points a game. That's the 15th in the country, so they have played very good. James Franklin understands that these guys, while they don't have the most talent in the country, they certainly will play hard and play smart. Franklin, fun to talk to, isn't he? He's, He's exciting. <laughs> Third down and three for Alabama. Tenth play of the drive. McCarron wants the end zone, throws, and is caught. Smell it. Back of the end zone, touchdown. The senior from right here in Tuscaloosa putting the tide in front. Smelly just runs an out and up. You see him in the slot, sells the out route, and then the perfect throw from A.J. McCarron to Smelly, the former quarterback. Quarterback to quarterback, and they love it. First career touchdown catch for Brad Smelly. It comes on homecoming night of his senior year. And Jeremy Shelley tacks on the extra point. Ten plays, 77 yards in 422. Brad Smelly, the touchdown, barely kept those feet in, but he did. SPNU College Football Prime Time is presented by Five Hour Energy. Five Hour Energy fixes tired fast. Visit fivehourenergy.com. Play Matt for Brian Greasy and Allison Williams back here in Tuscaloosa where the tide have moved in front seven to nothing. You mentioned it before, Brian, this Vandy defense coming in ranked 11th nationally, but they haven't seen an offense like they're seeing tonight. Well, and great balance on that drive from Alabama. Four first downs, they threw the ball on three of those four. So Jim McElwain, Nick Saban, and this offense are trying to develop A.J. McCarron's confidence and the balance on this offense that they know they're going to need throughout the rest of the SEC schedule. Cade Foster has been maligned for some short kickoffs this year. Puts that one inside the five. Andre Hal brings it across the 20 to the 22. Let's get an update on Georgia, Tennessee in the studio with an inch. All right, Clay, Georgia, chance to get on the board first. Blair Walsh splits the uprights from 35 yards out, and it's the dogs up 3-0 on Tennessee. Meanwhile, Arkansas missing a chance to strike first. Zach Hawker's kick hits the post from 34 yards out. They're scoreless, Arkansas and Auburn in the first quarter. Back to Tuscaloosa. How about that? They're scoreless, Brian. Last year, they couldn't stay out of the end zone. 108 <laughs> points combined last year. All right, here's Vandy back on offense. Larry Smith, a little trickeration. Jonathan Krause on the end around. And a pretty good run on first down. Let's go down to the sidelines for the first time and Allison Williams. Well, guys, this Alabama defense is designed to be complicated and create confusion. So during their off time on the sidelines, defensive coordinator, coordinator Kirby Smart was using that time to make sure there's no confusion for his guys. He had the dry erase board out the entire time, going through a lot of X's and O's, making sure guys knew, guys knew their coverages and their assignments. They haven't always gotten off to the best start, so they just want to make th sure they have things tightened up. Nick, Nick Saban also joined the conversation, guys. And Kirby's smart. He makes practices harder than the games. They have been boning up this week again for Vanderbilt. Udam Uma, the reception in the flat, and gets it to the 40-yard line. A first down for Vandy. Drake Kirkpatrick made the stop. You know, it's, it's interesting. You talk about, and Allison says that Alabama can be complicated. They can be when they want to be. They're good enough to play straight up man to man and get after offenses. And the thing that makes them different, in my opinion, why they're so good is they're able to change up their looks and mentally confuse offenses, which leads to mistakes and turnovers. That's what separates Alabama. First and 10 from the 41. Smith shoots it out to Zach Stacy, and he is hit immediately in the open field. 
And let's take a look at our impact players presented by Lee Jeans. Well, Zach Stacy just caught that last pass, but he's a guy that if Vanderbilt's going to move the ball, he's got to have a good day running it. He had a great day against Ole Miss, over 150 yards, but it'll be tough against this defense. Courtney Upshaw, seven and a half tackles for loss this season. He's our best player, in my opinion, on defense. And then in the secondary, Mark Barron, we've already seen him make plays, a sure tackler in space. Smith handoff right up the middle to Stacy. Penalty markers down. Courtney Upshaw, the aforementioned hybrid linebacker making the stop, but there is a flag on the play. There's Upshaw. And this is going to go against Vandy. Yeah, you mentioned Upshaw. He's the thing that, that makes him different. He's He's kind of like a joker. You know, Coach Gruden used to talk about jokers, and they were good in any hand. They're versatile. They can play different alignments. He can play defensive end with his hand in the Holding ground. Number 60 on the offense. 10-yard penalty in previous spot. He can play the outside linebacker position standing up. He can drop in coverage. He can rush. He can play the run. He is a special football player. He creates havoc on offense. Well, you can say that again last week. Had an interception return for a touchdown against Florida, and he knocked John Brantley out of that game and for who knows how long. Second and 19. Play fake. Smith throws downfield. Man wide open. It's Brandon Barton, the tight end. A first down and more. He is the team's number one receiver, and Vandy glad to have him back. Missed the last two games with an ankle injury. Yeah, he just got lost uh, in the alignment. Watch all the defenders at the top of the screen go after the rollout, and Barton just kind of leaks out late. Big play for Vanderbilt, who you've seen misdirections early in the game. I think that offensive coordinator John Donovan understands he can't just line up and run the ball between the tackles. He's got to create some confusion. He's been successful early on. After the gain of 31, Vandy in plus territory for the first time. Smith steps up and slides down close to the 31-yard line. To bring up second down and a long three. Nico Johnson the stop. This is an offense that has really struggled uh, coming into this football game. They're 117th in the country in offense, and Larry Smith has struggled. They've struggled to run the ball. They've struggled to throw the ball. And coming into Alabama uh, against one of the better, if not the best, defense in the country, they have had some success early on. A little over seven yards per play thus far. On second down, Smith to Kraus. Oh, and he is hogtied at the 32-yard line by Kirkpatrick. He is one big physical corner. We've got an Auburn-Arkansas update coming up shortly. Stick around. Kirkpatrick's the kind of player, the kind of physical player on the outside that, uh, that Alabama is known for, and he's matured. And we were talking with the coaches, Kirby Smart, talking to him right there, talking with Coach Smart yesterday. He said that Dre has really matured from a year ago. He's a very emotional player, loves to play with passion, but you can't let that passion get the best of you on the football field and, and allow you to create mistakes in your game, and Kirkpatrick has certainly gotten better in that area. That's, uh a foot short. So bring up third down. It's a big third down here. Third and short. Vanderbilt is uh, is not known for being big and physical and just pounding you off the ball. But in third and one situations, uh, that's what you need to do. Go back to that last play and uh, Courtney Upshaw. A little extra activity after the uh, whistle. Vanderbilt has been having a hard time on third down this year, just 20%, and now the noise is a real factor. They've been trying to simulate the noise in practice this week, but there's nothing like Bryant-Denny Stadium on game night. Might take a shot here. Rather than just running, might take a shot for the end zone. Third and one. Smith hit and dropped at the 30. Jesse Williams from Brisbane, Australia. And Josh Chapman combined for a loss of two. 
I'm not sure if that was a design run or whether that was an actual pass and Larry Smith just decided to run. I think he wanted to throw that ball, didn't find anybody, just ran up the middle, but nowhere to go as Chapman <laughs> stoned him at the line of scrimmage. Casey Spear comes on. He's three for three this year with a long of 33, but this one from 48 to get Vanderbilt on the board. Out of the hold of Richard Kent. Off the upright, no good. Had the distance, just couldn't tuck it inside. So the Alabama defense forces a field goal try and Spear can't put it through. 7-0 tied. And he's Shroff with his Sports Center U Studio update. Texas A&M's Ryan Tannehill threw for 449 yards in a win against Texas Tech last year. He's done the damage with his feet, rushing for a touchdown, 7-7 in Lubbock. Meanwhile, Arkansas missed a field goal. Auburn coming right back. Michael Dyer, 55 yards to the house. It's the Tigers up 7-0. We'll have updates from these games all night. Let's go back to Clay. All right, Anish, thank you very much. Everybody thinks Arkansas is going to win that game. I mean, everybody yeah. thinks Auburn's just going to continue to lose games, and they just keep winning. All right, here goes Alabama back to work on offense. Penalty flagged down after that catch by Mays. Fuger back on the field. Good to see for Vanderbilt. He made the stop for a loss of one, but there is the marker down. And the officials are going to caucus again down there on the field. And it's going to go against Alabama. Five men in the backfield on the offense. That penalty declined. Second down. Vanderbilt. Drove into Alabama territory. Spear missed a 47-yard field goal. And now Alabama has it back, leading 7-0 in the late stages of the opening quarter. Second down and 11 for A.J. McCarron, who's 7 of 9 for 53 yards passing. Richardson in the backfield. He'll get it. Looking for room on the near side. Gets to the 30-yard line, the original line of scrimmage. And that's where he's driven down by Barnes, who has become a starter for Vanderbilt at weak side linebacker after that season-ending knee injury to Tristan Strong. Yeah, you see early in this game, Vanderbilt are defensively committing to stopping Trent Richardson. And that's the way you got to play Alabama. Get your eighth guy in the box and be physical at the point of attack. And they are not getting blown off the ball by Alabama's offense early in this game. He'll line up as a receiver again, this time to the top of your screen on third down and 10. Bama 44% on third downs this year. McCarron sees the pocket close. His pass intended for Smelly is high. And it's fourth down. Another good defensive stand from Vanderbilt. They come into this game only giving up a 34% conversion on third down. They get some pressure on McCarron. They force an inaccurate throw and don't let the ball get behind them. That's good defense. So Jonathan Krause to return this punt at the 25 runs up to the 30 and muffed it. Ball is loose. Vandy on it. At the 31 yard line Trey Wilson recovers for Vanderbilt as they dodge a bullet. Now Monday's on ESPN you Jesse Palmer and David Pollock have their own show three hours of college football talk Palmer and Pollock one and nine Eastern every Monday. Boy James Franklin Hart skipped a beat. Go back and take a look at Larry Smith on that last run on third down it looked like he got hit and bent back yeah on his ankle there. And he is uh, not on the field. Backup Jordan Rogers comes into this football game, the brother of Aaron Rodgers of the Green Bay Packers. They're going to go to Jerron Seymour for his first carry of the game. 
Nick Gentry wraps him up. It's a loss of four. And Jordan Rogers, a, a Juco transfer. I was down on the field talking with head coach James Franklin before the game. And he says that Jordan's coming along. He missed some of the spring with a shoulder injury. So he's a little bit behind mentally, but he's very sharp. He's got good mobility, much like his brother. And he can run this offense efficiently. He has played in every game this year, but usually in mop-up duty. Play fake to the right. Going to keep it. And steps out of bounds at the 33-yard line. As he was being pursued by Jarrell Harris. Gain of five. Let's go down to Allison. Guys, I'm watching Larry Smith on the sidelines. They have taped his ankle over his shoe. He is trying to run back and forth, practice taking his drops. But every time he does, he looks at the staff, kind of grimaces and shakes his head. We'll have to keep an eye on him. James Franklin told you and I this week that he feels Larry Smith gives them the best chance to win. Not if he can't move like that. Larry Smith's game is mobile. And if he can't be mobile, he does not give them the best chance to win. Third down and eight. Rodgers to the flat. Seymour has room and a first down into Alabama territory. Gentry finally tracked him down, but it's a gain of 19. First down and 10 at the 47. Just great play design. Get the right guard and right tackle outside. You watch both of them will release quickly. Mylon Brown, Kyle Fisher get downfield, get a block, and create that pathway. Good design, a good play call by offensive coordinator John Donovan and James Franklin. Seymour, 5'7", 190, true freshman. Short but uh, thick running back out of the Miami area with a big play there as Vandy is into Alabama territory for the second time tonight. And you can see they're hanging in there, moving the football. Oh, that's what you got to do. You got to use Alabama's size and speed against them. Get the ball to the perimeter to your playmakers, and they might make a play. Alabama has the lead, but Vanderbilt in this game after one quarter. It's 7-0. We're back in Tuscaloosa after this timeout. The legendary Bear Bryant, who forever made houndstooth hats fashionable in the Deep South. Do you have any houndstooth in your closet? You know, I'm going to have to go get one of those ties on the way yeah. out. You know, they got the stand outside. That would go well next week, uh, uh, repertoire. <laughs> and in case you didn't know, Bear Bryant was uh, a coach at Vanderbilt once upon a time. I did not know that. There he is on the far right. 1940 to 41. He's on that coaching staff. Well, Vanderbilt has it at the 47-yard line of Alabama. After a big play by Jerron Seymour. Larry Smith, the starting quarterback for Vandy, shaken up on a play, and uh, his ankle is being addressed on the sideline. Jordan Rogers, the junior quarterback, in there now. This is the area of the field that offenses, when they cross the 50-yard line and get into defensive territory, sometimes they like to take a shot down the field. Rogers, quick strike to the flat. And uh, Krause can't come up with it. So to bring up second down and 10. It's a good accurate throw from Rogers, trying to get the ball on the perimeter again. Allow Krause to make some plays. They just have not gotten the consistency from the wide receiver group here at Vanderbilt. And if they're going to move the football, they've got to be able to get more consistency, more plays from guys like Krause and Matthews and Chris Boyd. 39-year-old head coach James Franklin looking on. Second and 10. Rodgers running the option, keeps it. And gets leveled at the 40-yard line by Mark Barron. The head-hunting free safety laid a lick that Rodgers will never forget. Looks like it knocked his ear hole out, but Rodgers has the mobility. But right now, you got to get down, son. That's going to hurt. Mark Barron, full speed here. Mercy. He is vicious. He and Lester make as good of a safety tandem as you're going to find in the country. On 
third down. The pitch, Seymour. Not going to get there. In fact, a loss. Harris on the tackle. Let's go to the studio for an update. All right, Clay, this conference update brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Arkansas running back Broderick Green tore his ACL in the spring, scored two touchdowns in his return last week, finds the end zone here, and the Razorbacks and Auburn tied up at seven. All right, Anish, thank you very much. Meanwhile, back here, a man down for Vanderbilt, Mason Johnston. And while they look at him, We'll take a commercial break. Fourth and five coming up for Vandy. ESPNU College Football Primetime is brought to you by the new Capital One Cash Card for the people who want 50% more cash. Another Vanderbilt casualty. Mason Johnston left the field. It's like a left leg injury of some sort. The Alabama's been very physical here in the early going. Punting situation as Richard Kent places it at the 11-yard line where Mays calls for the fair catch, a 32-yard punt. And there is Trent Richardson. Where is he on your Heisman list right now? Uh, you know, he's right up there with Andrew Luck. I think, you know, after the uh, injury to Michael James la uh, last night and then, you know, Lattimore of South Carolina is taking a step back. Trent Richardson, in my opinion, is the best back in the country right now and deserves to be in the discussion for the Heisman going forward. And he's ahead of Mark Ingram's 2009 pace. Of course, that year he won the Heisman. And he's got the opportunity against some really good teams down the road LSU that play Tennessee and Auburn so he's going to have every opportunity to stake his claim. Justin Fowler the sophomore tailback is in there now for Alabama. He's expected to get more carries tonight because Eddie Lacy is out with turf toe. Tim Fuger wraps him up for Vanderbilt after a short gain a gain of four. And this is typically how they did it last week. Uh, Lacey came in the first drive of the second quarter against Florida. This is their normal rotation where uh, they'll have uh, Trent Richardson take a breather that first drive. As you see, Reagan Upshaw just went back to the locker room. Huh. Not exactly sure why. If we get an update, we'll let you know. Second down and six for Bama. McCarron crossing route to Mays. First down and more. To the 30 and stood up at the 33 yard line by Hal. It's an 18 yard pass play. Mays is the guy that can really make some plays, get him the football in space, and let him use his ability. He's a great return guy on special teams. This is nothing more than a kickoff return here. Get the ball in his hands and let him read the defense and make some plays with his speed. Start to uh, show some signs that this wide receiver core is going to make some big plays. Here's Fowler. He's upended at the 40-yard line by Garnum, a gain of six. So yeah. second down at four. You know, the one thing about this wide receiver core, it's not that they can't catch and run. It's how physical can they be coming off the line of scrimmage. And against uh, these kind of defenses in the SEC, like LSU, that'll come up and challenge you in man-to-man -man coverage, can Hanks and Mays, who are really slight of build, and DeAndre White, can they get off the line of scrimmage? That's been the real question. And can McCarron get it to him? He has been asked to manage the game this year for the most part. Second down to Mays. No game. Let's go to the studio for Sports Center now. Anish Shroff here with the Sports Center right now, brought to you by Discover. Third ranked Oklahoma, forcing five turnovers. The Sooners scored three defensive touchdowns. OU steamrolling Texas 55 17. Clemson quarterback. Taj Boyd left today's win with a hip injury. X-rays negative and MRI is forthcoming. The Tigers, though, 6-0 on the season with the win. Yeah, how costly was that injury? I mean, yeah. Clemson gets a, a big win, but you hope that uh, Taj Boyd can come back soon. You and I are going to be uh, in Maryland next week to see Clemson and Maryland. Fowler. A run on first down, or a run for first down, I should say. A pickup of eight for the sophomore, who started out as a linebacker. He's really built like a linebacker or a fullback, but he's getting tailback 
reps here tonight. I would you like to, you know, have to tackle Trent Richardson in the first quarter with that speed and power. Then they put in Jalston Fowler at 6'1", 250 pounds, let him run downhill at you. That is not an easy job as a linebacker for Vanderbilt tonight. He stays on the field for first down here. And it's an inside handoff to Fowler. He'll pick up about a yard and a half on that play as Garnum quickly there to wrap him up. The run defense for Vanderbilt, Greece, allowing just 97 yards per game coming into this one, but you're right. I mean, when you, you got Richardson to deal with, and now you can see that Fowler's got some talent, too. I mean, this is going to be a tough night for this defense. I've been impressed with the way they played early on, though. They are not backing down to Alabama one bit in a hostile environment on the road. Uh, they have brought their A game, and they are playing hard up front despite losing some players. Alabama with 46 rushing yards so far. High snap, McCarron hands off. Fowler looking for room on the outside. Gets across midfield. Tries to stay on his feet, but Marv there to make the tackle. Also Richardson combining on the play. One yard pickup. Yeah, Sean Richardson is uh, is one of their run stoppers from the safety position. He's much like his counterpart, Mark Barron, on the other side. 6'2", 218 pounds, almost identical in size. And Richardson has made a lot of plays for Vanderbilt. He led the team with 98 tackles a year ago, and now they've only allowed seven 11 rushes for two yards. He's also an Alabama native. A lot of these guys fired up to be playing in their home state tonight. Third down and seven. McCarron off his back foot, drops it off short to Richardson, and he is stopped at midfield. A loss of one, Casey Hayward having a great senior year makes the tackle and Alabama forced to kick. Well, Casey Hayward's been known for intercepting the football. He's got four interceptions on the year, leads the nation, but right here you see his versatility play off the block, read the screen, and then come up and tackle 230 pounds of Trent Richardson. Outstanding football player, Casey Hayward, both against the pass and physical against the run. Bob Shoup, first year defensive coordinator for Vanderbilt. A young Ivy League guy has done a great job with this defensive unit for Vandy. Kraus lets it go into the end zone. And Vandy will start at the 20 when we come back. One of the best defenses in the country set to come back out on the field. They have been physical all year long. We'll see him again right after this timeout. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa and the SEC on ESPN. Alongside Brian Greasy, I'm Clay Maffick. Allison Williams down on the field. 8.40 to go before half. And Vanderbilt hanging in there with the number two team in the country. As Courtney Upshaw, the Jack linebacker for the Tide, is back out on the field. That's good news for Crimson Tide fans. Rodgers still in there at quarterback. Underneath to Wesley Tate, the younger brother of Golden Tate. Big play out to midfield. Dean Milliner ran him out of bounds, but a huge gain of 28 yards for Vandy. Vanderbilt not even trying to throw the ball down the field. They understand they can't protect that long. They're just going to throw the ball short and on the perimeter to their wide receivers and let them run. Tate's just running a shallow cross route. Get the ball out of your hand and make somebody miss. Hightower. 260 pound linebacker cannot keep up with Tate nice moves and footwork on the uh, on the outside big gain back close into Alabama territory once again for the third time in a row. Heard a lot of critics this week say that uh, Vandy might not get across the midfield strike in this game but uh, here they're about ready to do it for the third time. Yep. And now a timeout called by James Franklin just 39 years old he is the third Vanderbilt head coach in that many years he was the offensive coordinator in Maryland and K-State before coming to Nashville what do you think of this guy well I think he's he's fantastic he's energetic he's positive he brings a lot of passion and accountability to the table and I think this team these young players are buying into what he's selling he's got a resume that they can trust and believe in at Kansas State 
he mentored Josh Freeman now at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and then he brought up Danny O'Brien uh, at Maryland had 22 touchdowns and eight interceptions a year ago he knows what he's talking about offensively now just the entire organization and the University of Vanderbilt needs to buy into the passion and energy of James Franklin we'll see what they dialed up after the timeout Vanderbilt 114 yards of offense already so far. Rodgers hands off to Seymour. He plunges ahead for a handful. Upshaw making the tackle. Down to Allison. Well, guys, when Franklin put his staff together, he wanted youthful energy and passion. He wanted to surround himself with smart, talented people. The result, a staff that's pretty young, average age just 38, and several Ivy Leaguers in there, including Bob Shoup, defensive coordinator, went to Yale. Offensive coordinator John Donovan went to John Hopkins. He said he didn't want people that have been in the business so long that in the back of their mind they've heard what a challenge Vandy is. And perhaps, guys, it's only appropriate that at the only private school in the SEC you have a staff stacked with impressive degrees. A lot of smart cookies on <laughs> is that, that staff. coaching staff or a cabinet? <laughs> Lashing the catch and a first down for Vandy. Dante Hightower finally made the tackle, but it's a gain of 11 for Fitz Lassing, the sophomore fullback. Well, this uh, this coaching staff has come in with a smart plan tonight. I tell you, they're getting the football outside on the edges. Another play action to the fullback, to Lansing. Get accurate throws from your quarterback. They lost their starting quarterback. Do remember now, this is a kid that hasn't played a whole lot at Vanderbilt, and this coaching staff has got the right plan at the right time. Rodgers quick drop quick strike and it's complete to Seymour and it's another first down a gain of 12 Lester on the tackle let's go to the studio for a quick update and he's Rob here in the Sports Center U studio freshman Kyle Frazier for Auburn scoring his first collegiate touchdown from seven yards out Tigers up 14 7 at the end of one when these two played last year it was the highest scoring regulation game in SEC history. Yeah, we remember. And it was uh, Tyler Wilson's coming out party, too. All right, first down and 10 for Vandy. They're moving the football. Pitch to Stacy, fakes the reverse, and he is caught from behind by Upshaw. Not only big, but quick. It's a loss of one. Wow, that's amazing. Courtney Upshaw at 265, able to pull down Stacy. They fake the reverse. They got three or four Alabama defenders to bite on the reverse. And if Courtney Upshaw doesn't make that play, it could go for another gain. I can't help but wonder here, Clay, as we watch young Jordan Rogers operate this offense, whether he's the kind of guy that James Franklin wants. His offenses were throwing offenses, not spread, run, option, zone, read offenses. He's the kind of guy that I think James Franklin's been looking for. Now, no running room for Stacy up the middle. No gain. As... Jesse Williams makes the tackle. Williams grew up playing rugby in Australia. Hasn't been playing football very long, but the Alabama defensive end is really taken to it. This Alabama defense now stiffening inside the red zone area. Coming into this game, they had only had 10 opponents drive inside their own 40-yard line, and now Vanderbilt, the second time that they've got into Alabama territory. A one for four tonight on third down. Third and a long 11. Rodgers flushed, looking for room to run, and well short of the first down. Mark Barron comes up, makes a big tackle. It's a gain of four for Rodgers. Gets Vandy into a better situation for the field goal try, but not by much. So Spear will come out for the second time tonight. He missed earlier from 47. It hit off the crossbar. His first miss of the year. And so officially, this one will be from 38. No good. So Vandy comes up empty for the second time wow. and you cannot do that against this Alabama team you've got to take advantage of your scoring opportunity I tell you Vanderbilt offensively defensively have come to play tonight unfortunately their kicker has it
The last time Vanderbilt won in this series, 1984. It was also homecoming night that night. But uh, James Franklin's team yet to score a couple of missed field goals. Catch BCS Countdown tomorrow and Monday as your experts project who will top the BCS polls one week before the first poll is unveiled. Three times you have a chance to see it. 8.15 Sunday on ESPN, then on the U at 9 Eastern, and then Monday the Encore presentation at 6 Eastern. Oklahoma hammered Texas today. LSU smacked Florida around. McCarron on first down is complete to the 25-yard line to Hanks. Chris Marv making the tackle. It's a big series here for Vanderbilt defensively. You've had two 80 or eight play drives that have ended in missed field goals. You've played almost a half of football, only down a touchdown to the number two ranked team in the country. If you can get a stop here and go to halftime, only down seven, that's a win. Second down at five, McCarron. To Mays. And he is going to be close to a first down. Looks like he's got it before Hayward makes the tackle. You really got a feel for James Franklin over there on the Vandy sideline. He is preparing his team the best he can to come into a hostile environment. The team has played well thus far, but no points on the board when they easily could be down just one point. They should be only down one point. And James Franklin's a psychology major in college. He got his master's in educational leadership. He's going to use all of that tonight with his kicker. McCarron! is wrestled down by Rob Lohr. Maybe Vandy's best performer up front so far this year. Loss of seven. Yeah, Lohr number 84, right in the middle of the little cross game. He gets on the Steen, the right guard, and just goes right by him. Steen is the one weak link of this Alabama offensive line. He was the only non-returning starter on this line, and uh, Lohr took advantage of him there. Ninth Vanderbilt sack this year. So now second down at 18. Mays with the catch. And he works hard to get to the 35 before Garnum brings him down. They get eight yards back. Third down and fairly long here for Bama. And that was a big sack to put uh, Bama behind the down distance. And I think that Jim McElwain will be conservative here. He's not going to throw the ball. 10 15 yards down the field to try to get a first down he'll probably throw it underneath and if the guy can run for the first down great if not punt trying to convert on third down for the fourth time tonight deep pass over the middle of the field man is trip penalty flag Hanks went down he got tangled up with Eric Samuels and Samuels gets flagged big break for Alabama because I don't know if that pass was catchable well, it may have been catchable if he didn't get tackled. He came in the slot. He ran a double move on the inside. You'll see Hanks. He coming over the middle and then up the field, and he just gets tackled at the end of this Pass play. Number 22 on the defense. Penalty 15 yards. Automatic first down. And I think that's, you know what, that's a good play by Samuels, honestly, because if he doesn't tackle Hanks right there, that's a touchdown. That's the third penalty against Vanderbilt. They are ninth in the SEC in penalties, averaging over seven per game. Just too many as far as Franklin is concerned. Richardson gashes that Vandy D right up the middle. And a marker is down. He gets to the 35-yard line. And it's going to come back. I think they're going to get a legal block in the back from uh, Marquise Mays, the wide receiver who came in from the from the outside and was trying to get a block. Illegal block in the back. Number four on the offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of foul. First down. It's the first accepted penalty. There he is right here on the outside. You'll see him on the left side of your screen. You can roll it, guys. Not much. He doesn't get much contact, but he does get a little bit. And I think the, uh, the official just saw him go in and on the back of the defender make contact and called the flag. 
Richardson tries to get to the outside. And he's going to get five. Kenny Ladler, the backup free safety, number one, makes the stop. Sophomore out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, a state that uh, James Franklin has been doing a good job recruiting in. Need to get a pass rush and get some pressure on A.J. McCarron. On second down, McCarron steps up, throws, incomplete, intended for Michael Williams. And Hayward was there in the secondary for the Commodores. Third and 14 now for the tie. Looked like McCarron locked into his big tight end there a little bit on the last play. He was well covered, tried to force the back shoulder throw. Nick Saban really wanted him to work the other side of the field, had three wide receivers set to the field and open receivers with opportunity to make a play. Young quarterbacks sometimes will lock in once they get a guy they feel comfortable with and not read and go through their progressions. And A.J. McCarron's got to fight that. Tandy has forced some third and longs tonight. This is the third time tonight of three. Third down and ten or more. Mays the catch. Close to the 25-yard line. Gain of 20. That's a great throw from McCarron. Mays just runs a... Uh, a dig route from the outside and that ball thrown perfectly on time and accurate for a big play. And now a timeout Alabama. Nick Saban calls a timeout. 54 seconds to go before halftime Alabama trying to tack on to their lead. Alabama driving and they're at the 25 of Vandy after a big play a reception by Mays. Let's go back and take a look at that last throw. Very impressive from A.J. McCarron. Stop it right there. You see he releases the football and Mays is not to his point yet. Great anticipation and accuracy. This is what Nick Saban, Jim McElwain want to see from A.J. McCarron. They haven't thrown the ball down the field very successfully yet this year. That throw was a very confident one from A.J. McCarron. McCarron now 14 of 18 for 118 and a touchdown pass. Vandy showing blitz. They bring the pressure. McCarron releases, gets it out to the 20-yard line, and the tight end, Smelling, for a gain of five. Clock stops, 49 seconds to go before half. This is a really critical opportunity for A.J. McCarron to show his coach, Nick Saban, how he has learned and progressed and matured as a quarterback. This situation, you've got plenty of time on the clock, two timeouts. You want to make sure you get a, an opportunity to throw this ball to the end zone, but don't make any mistakes with the football trying to be too aggressive. Again, not asked to win games, just not lose them. He's done a pretty good job of that so far this year. Looking to throw here. Smelly again, first down. And he is taken down at the 12-yard line. Clock stops to move the chains. A gain of eight. Now you want to get up and run a play here if you're not going to use your timeout. Get the play communicated quickly so that you can snap this football right after they set it. Clock starts on first down. Caught, Mays stayed in bounds. Nice catch to the five yard line. Great accurate throw. Vanderbilt came with a blitz off the edge. McCarron doesn't panic. He knows he's got a quick out route to Mays. The key to this throw is it's right on target. Good coverage by Hayward, but a better throw from McCarron. Mays now seven catches for 67 yards. Second down and three as Alabama is trying to score right before half. And now you've got dealer's choice. You can run the football here with Richardson because you know you got two timeouts and can make a first down. This drive, McCarron has been superb. Pressure again to the end zone. Too tall. Hanks, the intended receiver. If he had been 6'4, that's a catch, but he's six foot. Vanderbilt came with the same exact blitz, double edge pressure, and there's no safety in the middle of the field. McCarron sees it, just needs to buy a little bit more time and give Hanks an opportunity. Nice job of him reading the defense there, and Nick Saban knows a little bit more accurate throw there, and it's a touchdown, but he's got to be happy with the way McCarron is seeing the field tonight. So a big third down and three, this Vandy defense, which 
you and I have been very impressed with here in the first half. Would love to force a field goal try. Only four seconds on the play clock. They get it off in time. McCarron pumps. Now has a lane. Lobs it to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Oh, what a catch by DeAndre White. Athletic play by the freshman out of Houston. Great job by McCarron, not forcing the ball. He could have run this football in, but decides to throw it to White, who climbs the ladder. Beautiful catch and inbounds for the touchdown. Extra point by Smelly makes it 14 to nothing. First career touchdown catch for White. And this will make the season highlight reel. Anish Shroff here in studio coming up at halftime. We'll update you on Auburn and Arkansas. What's new? Auburn playing another close game. Jason Seahorn and Rod Gilmore will debate who should be number one, LSU or Alabama. And does Oklahoma, after their big win today, deserve to be in that conversation as well? DeAndre White with as pretty of a catch as you're going to see, and it comes from a rookie. You know, they expect big things from that young man. And he caps a beautiful drive, 13 plays, 78 yards in just under four minutes. McCarron was dynamite on that series of plays for Alabama. Manage, manage the game, and I don't like the management moniker. I don't think it's apropos for quarterbacks, especially ones that are undefeated and leading the best team in the country. But he certainly managed that last drive very well. Hal on the return for Vanderbilt, and they're not going to have a lot of time to work with here. 15 seconds to go before halftime. Harris makes the tackle. You go back and look at that last play. You see, didn't try to force the ball, had an opportunity to run there, but gave his wide receiver a chance. If he didn't catch it, nobody caught it. But you look at it from this, this angle, look at all the space he had to potentially run that ball in. And after the fact, when he was coming off the field, Nick Saban, you can read his lips, say, hey, if you, why didn't you run it? <laughs> Not even happy when he throws a touchdown pass. <laughs> Nick Saban's a hard guy to please, but he's trying to counsel his quarterback for the future. Say, hey, if you can run that in, that's the easiest course. And at the end of that, he gave him a nice pat on the back. Said, but that's okay. At least you got a touchdown. All right, so Vanderbilt, happy to be down 14-0. They're not going to take a shot. James Franklin's team down a couple of touchdowns. They missed a couple of field goals in the first half. What did you think of Vandy? I thought they came out and played very hard, both on offense and defense, did what they needed to do to stay in this game. Their kicker just missed both field goals. There's James Franklin. And now we're going to hear from Nick Saban. Let's go down to Allison. Thank you, Clay. Coach Saban, your offense gets a much-needed touchdown to finish off the first half. Do you feel like they're starting to find their rhythm? No, not really. We don't have enough intensity, and we're not executing what we do on either side of the ball. So, you know, we're, we're going to struggle. If we don't find a, a, the, the kind of mental energy that you need to be able to play a football game the way you're supposed to, well, we're not going to do very well. And these guys are doing a good job against us. Defensively, what adjustments will you need to make in the second half? Well, we just keep making mental errors. I mean, we, we made a whole bunch of mental errors, which comes from a lack of focus and a lack of concentration. So, you know, we got to get those things corrected. Thanks, Coach Saban. Guys. He's a hard man to please, but he'll take that as a compliment because he's a perfectionist. He certainly is, and uh, he knows how to motivate his team. That last drive, whether Nick Saban likes it or not, was impressive from A.J. McCarron, but... He wouldn't let you know that. 14 nothing at the half. Here's an H. All right, thank you, Clay. Welcome to the Sports Interview Halftime Report. Let's get you caught up on what's going on in Fayetteville. Auburn taking on Arkansas. Michael Dyer, 55-yard touchdown run. That's the BCS Championship Game MVP. Auburn up 7-0. This after Arkansas missed a field goal. But Tyler Wilson to Jarius Wright. Oh, that's beautiful. 40-yard gain. Take one more look. Mm. Arkansas, though, would not score on the drive. Seven seconds left in the first quarter. That's Kyle Frazier, the freshman. First collegiate touchdown. Auburn up seven. But then it's Arkansas's quarterback, Tyler Wilson, the QB keeper. 14-14. Surprise, surprise. Auburn is in a close game. Meanwhile, Georgia, they're tied up with Tennessee. That's a low-scoring affair. 3-3. Less than two minutes to play in the first half. 
And with that, we say hello. Welcome to halftime here on Sports Center. You alongside a couple of DBs, Jason Seahorn and Rod Gilmore. Hi. I'm an H. Trough. Yeah, we've got the we've got past, it covered. We've got yeah. it. We've got <laughs> it. Covered. We should have it covered. How's that? Cover two. <laughs> Florida and LSU. LSU's had it covered for the first four or five weeks of the season. Florida quarterback issues. John Brantley hurting. Jeff Driscoll, we thought was going to start. Well, he's hurting too, an ankle injury. So Jacoby Brissett. Freshman, first ever start in Death Valley. Oh, oh, good luck. Defense. And there's the Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew, blowing up Chris Rainey. Three-yard loss. Florida would punt. Second of all offensive play for LSU, Jarrett Lee, Ruben Randall. Oh, this is coming around, making the big plays for him. Randall, four catches, 127 yards. All right, guys, fake punt here. Brad Wing is going to go in and score, but watch what happens before he reaches the end zone. Now, was that taunting before he got in? Did you see that? They call it unsportsmanlike conduct. Yep. Well, they, they talk about this the entire offseason, and they take the points off the board. Points off the board. New rule. It's a live ball foul if you taunt and are whistled for unsportsmanlike conduct while the play is still ongoing. That's why the points come off the board. If he had celebrated in the end zone, touchdown would have count. Penalty would have been assessed after. Act like you've been there before, fellas. There's the rule, 9-2-1. LSU would end up kicking a field goal on the drive, so they'd be up 17-0. And then uh, more from the Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew. You're a couple of DBs. Case for the Heisman here? I mean, there's some offensive explosions going on this year, but as far as defensive guys, he's head and shoulders above the rest of the class right now. Yeah, he's the player of the year defensively right now. He's moving to the Heisman discussion only at number seven, according to Joe Tessitore's Heismanology of Heisman voters at ESPN, but he's got to score other ways to climb up. Every week he's either picking off passes, forcing fumbles, six tackles, and an interception in the big win against Florida. LSU and Alabama, two SEC teams, one and two in the nation in the AP poll. In your eyes, we'll start with you, Rod. Who deserves to be number one? I'm not sure it really matters. You know, I, they're in the same the conference, in the same division. They're going to play each other in November. Right now, I don't care if the one is one or two. It doesn't really matter. But if I had to choose, I'm taking LSU because I think right now, Jason, I think they've done more to earn being that. With the teams that they've played on the road, I'm going to give them the check and put Alabama right behind them. Absolutely. Think about it. This is the team that keeps leapfrogging people along the way. And this is all window dressing to that game against Alabama later in the season. And the game you're watching right now, what Alabama's doing against Vanderbilt, doesn't exactly separate them from the class. LSU separate themselves against you know, Oregon early or Mississippi State. I mean, you name it. And now today against Florida. Yeah, LSU has beaten four ranked teams now in their first six games. Certainly, they have the resume. Oklahoma started the season at number one. They reminded us today against undefeated Texas why they still might have a case for number one. This is ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by Five Hour Energy. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa and the SEC on ESPN. This homecoming crowd here in Tuscaloosa. Maybe a little shocked by the score at halftime. It's 14-0. The number two team in the country leading Vanderbilt on homecoming night. And Brian Greasy, this number one rushing offense of Alabama held to just 46 yards in that first half. But A.J. McCarron, the quarterback for Bama, picking up the slack. They're going to need him throughout the SEC schedule. If they're going to compete against the LSUs and Auburns, they're going to need A.J. McCarron to throw the football and do it effectively. And on that last drive, you see the confidence with which he threw the ball down the field with a lot of accuracy. I like the way that he took control of the huddle against an all-out blitz, got the ball out of his hand and accurate, and then finished that drive off with this touchdown pass which put an exclamation point and a 14-0 lead for Alabama. And I know that Nick Saban, we saw his comments. We're going into halftime. He was not happy. He wants to keep this team motivated. And I know what his expectations are. They're nothing short of perfection. And I'm sure he was upset that Vanderbilt even attempted two field goals on his defense. And they'll come out uh, ready to play in the second half. Cade Foster with the kick. Hal takes it at the 10. And gets to the 25 and is stood up there. As Vanderbilt will start with the football here in the second half. The starting quarterback for Vanderbilt, Larry Smith, uh, left the game in the first half with a left foot injury. He is not going to come out to start this half. 
Jordan Rogers pretty impressive though in his stead. Yeah, and just go back and take a look at the injury. His left foot gets kind of bent back on him there and did not look good. But you're right, Jordan Rogers came in and threw the ball. He was accurate four out of five in the first half, and he ran the ball three times for 17 yards. And yeah, I think he's the style of quarterback that James Franklin is more used to than the offense and defense right out of the gate to start the third quarter. Handoff to Stacy. Zach Stacy, the junior running back for Vanderbilt. Getting a lot of playing time here now that Warren Norman is out here's the quarterback comparison Smith and Rogers Rogers four of five for 72 in that first half yeah, how would you like your first extended playing time and uh, major FBS college football to be on the road in Tuscaloosa against the best defense in the country I mean he's got a lot on his shoulders tonight a defense that has knocked two starting quarterbacks out the last two games John Brantley went out last week for Florida End around Kraus. They tried this in the first half, and pretty much the same story. Nico Johnson and Mark Barron. A loss of three. You gotta figure this defense got to talk into it at halftime. Here's Barron right here. He's not gonna be fooled. He's gonna come up and have force on the reverse. Fights off the block from the offensive lineman and keeps contained. And Nico Johnson and the rest of the party come. This is a defense that's very disciplined. Everybody talks about how physical they are and how much talent they have, but what separates them is their discipline, not giving up big plays. Kirby Smart, the defensive coordinator, deserves a lot of credit. On third and ten, Rodgers on the crossing route to Kraus, and he is suffocated. Dante Hightower makes the tackle. Let's go back to the first half and update you. Look at the rushing yards. Just 46 for Alabama coming into the night, leading the SEC in that category. But this Vandy defense looked pretty good in that first half. Well, it certainly did, and Alabama's going to need to find ways to move the football. If, if teams are going to sell out to stop the run with eight and nine-man fronts with Trent Richardson, A.J. McCarron's got to make them pay on first and second down specifically. Three and out for Vanderbilt on their first possession of the half. Booming punt off the foot of Kent. This is Marquise Mays, the explosive return man. Hurtling men, but there are penalty flags down, and he is out at the 31-yard line. A 54-yard punt by Kent, but there are markers on the field. Penn Wagers, our referee tonight. Illegal block in the back. Number 81 on the return team. Penalty will be half the distance to the goal. First down. Second penalty against Alabama tonight. Now Trent Richardson needs to get going. Just 32 yards rushing in that first half. He had a long run of 20 yards. But, uh, I mean, he comes in averaging 124, so way below his average. Well, he can... He can make a lot of yards up in a hurry, uh, and I expect to see quite a bit, a heavy dose of Trent Richards here in the second half. Really enjoyed talking with him yesterday. Very humble kid, works hard, very smart, and uh, he's all about the team. And he'll start from the end zone, gets up a head of steam. Good carry on first down. Out to the 12. Sean Richardson making the tackle a gain of seven, so second down and three. The thing that's really impressive about him, Clay, is, is for all of his size and his strength has been well documented, uh, but it's his vision to me and his quick feet. Reminds me a lot uh, of Mark Ingram. And his, so we, he talked about how Mark Ingram taught him how to study tape and how to watch defense, how to read blocks and set up blocks, and certainly benefited from his tutelage. Gets in the feet of the lineman. Tries to pick his way for a first down, which is pretty darn close as he gets to the 15-yard line. Yeah, his relationship with Ingram, it has really benefited Richardson. I think it's benefited both guys, to be honest with you. I mean, Mark Ingram had a great year in 2009, uh, won the Heisman Trophy, but, you know, Trent Richardson certainly helped him 
in that cause and, and spelling him in those uh, those games during that season and uh, I think Trent Richardson has, has every bit of ability that Mark Ingram had if not more tight formation here we'll see if they sneak it or hand it to Richardson on third and very short it's Trent spins off a tackle first down and more to the 21 yard line a gain of six for the junior out of Pensacola and it was interesting one of the things he said to us yesterday was after carrying the ball 29 times against Florida which is a very good defense 181 yards that's the most carries he's had in his career it's the most carries that any back has ever had in Nick Saban's career here at Alabama but he said he felt as good as he's ever felt after a football game after last week so he's just kind of hitting his stride this season just a tremendous athlete and they'll keep him busy looking for room over right tackle and a gain of three this week we talked to uh, Mark Ingram about his former understudy and this is what he's said about him he's done an amazing job so far stepping into his role as a leader of the team he's always been a playmaker the production he's had has been no surprise to Mark Ingram and Richardson will say about Ingram he taught him humility yeah which was really great to hear and they, those two guys talk two or three times a week he said and challenge each other and Trent said he challenges Mark Ingram said hey man you should have pushed it more on that last run against the <laughs> Tampa Bay Buccaneers <laughs> well jabbing going back and forth why not McCarron to the outside that's Marquise Mays oh ducks under a tackle and reaches out for the first down a gain of eight what a play after the catch by Mays Mays is not known for his breakaway speed but he's very shifty he's able to get around and slippery duck under a uh, tackle there from Garnham he's crafty the team really needed a answer and wide receiver as far as a go to guy after the loss of Julio Jones and Mays has pretty much stepped into and number one spot even though they'd like him to be more explosive Richardson oh my first down out to midfield a punishing run 19 yards on the play great blocking on the edge from the tight end position Michael Williams 89 smelly they seal the edge and allow Richardson to get outside and then it's all his talent from there on out and the thing you see there with that kind of a spin move at full speed that's balance when you can do that when you can jump stop spin and then keep your forward momentum going that's a rare ability that Trent Richardson has he has been featured on this opening series of the second half for Bama to the 30 down at the 26 Javon Marshall brought him down to the turf but another big run for Trent Richardson a gain of 24 lots of left tackle Womack come through and get a block great blocking by Williams at tight end just a power OG play right up the gut and Vanderbilt now uh, is reeling with this rushing attack from Alabama credit Jim McElwain with making the adjustments at halftime finding what's going to work on the ground after not being very productive in the first half and they've done it Jalston Fowler comes in to give Richardson a breather and look at that run for the 6 1 246 pound sophomore Richardson 61 yards rushing on this drive for Alabama well we said that uh, they could break out at any moment and uh, Richardson certainly has first half 32 yards this drive he's almost doubled that so it doesn't take long for him to get rolling and this Alabama running game starting to roll Fowler stays in there on second and four. And seven runs, one pass on this series thus far. Fowler cuts back, first down. Oh, he just laid out Marv, the linebacker. That's a gain of 10 for Jolston Fowler. I think you could have run through that hole there, Clay. Watch the blocking up front. It's seven, eight yards or four fouls even touched, and then he just runs over 250 pounds over Marv. Marv's an all SEC linebacker right there, but Vanderbilt's certainly on ice skates going backwards right now. First down and goal for Bama. Fowler just pushes his way inside the five. 
Boy, he is like a baby bull. Archie Barnes makes the tackle, but they're set up nicely. Second down and goal from the four coming up. And you get the feeling that Alabama had a little conversation at halftime in the locker room about being physical, about focus, about coming out in this second half and making a statement. They did it on defense. Now they're certainly doing it on offense. They've driven at 90 yards so far. Richardson gets the carry. And he is going to be stopped at the two. Colt Nichter, the defensive tackle, makes the stop. It's been an interesting play call here. Third down now, about the two-yard line, and what Jim McElwain will do here, run this ball again. They've run it 10 out of 11 snaps on this drive, and will they decide to throw the ball here in their last uh, opportunity to get it in the end zone or continue to run it? That's the second time tonight that Tim Fuger has been slow to get up. A senior defensive end. While they look at him, Alabama contemplates its next move, leading 14 to nothing. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Looks like Brian Greasy on Clay Matthick, Allison Williams down on the field. Mondays on ESPN, you, Jesse Palmer, and David Pollock will talk college football for three hours. It's entertaining. It's informative. You don't want to miss it. Palmer and Pollock on the U at 1 and 9 Eastern every Monday. Alabama did not show this in the first half on the ground. This drive started at their own six. I think they try to run this thing in to finish it off on the ground. Oh, they try to shift there with three guys and... Uh, Womack, the left guard, moved. This is going to go against Alabama. Well, they had not set the football yet. Is that what they're going to say here? Well, they get a break. Wow. Stays third down and goal to go. There's that shift. Twelfth play of the drive. Richardson lowers his head and is stopped. And another flag comes in. Rob Lohr and Nickter there for Vandy. And that's going to go against the Commodores. Offside, 58 on the defense. Penalty half the distance to the goal. Third down. And it is Colt Nichter, the junior defensive tackle. Looks like he may have uh, jumped just barely into the neutral zone, but he got back there. It was They called that lined up in the neutral zone because uh, they did not throw that flag until they snapped the football. Crucial penalty that gives Alabama another chance to pound this ball in. Richardson behind the fullback. Touchdown. A 94-yard touchdown drive for the Crimson Tide. Impressive drive on the ground almost exclusively, and James Franklin knows that that penalty lined up in the neutral zone was costly. They had stopped Alabama and forced the field goal. And now Jeremy Shelley for the extra point. Yeah, Vandy has had some opportunities to be much closer in this game. As it happens, Alabama now with a three-touchdown lead. A beautiful drive for Bama. Spearheaded by Heisman candidate Trent Richardson. Number three, right in the middle of his band of brothers, the offensive line. He really gives that offensive line credit for what he's been able to do on the ground this year. He just got his 11th rushing touchdown. Yeah, it's always good to see when the running back sits next to the offensive line and knows where his bread is buttered. Yeah. And those guys up front, they love blocking for Trent Richardson. They say he makes everything easier, their job easier. And when he's out there working hard in practice, in fact, the center of Lejos said in practice, Trent Richardson works harder than anybody. So it, it keeps their uh, attention, and they love blocking for him.
Good return for Andre Hell. Cade Foster, the kicker, maybe one of the best cover men for Alabama, makes another tackle. Let's go down to Allison. Guys, this is certainly not the start to the third quarter Vanderbilt's James Franklin wanted, but when I talked to him after the half, he said he's feeling pretty good. He said, we came in here with a great game plan and we've been able to execute. We feel like it's working fairly well. As far as things offensively with Larry Smith out and Jordan Rogers in at quarterback, he said it does not change what we're going to do one bit. Clay? Yeah, right. I, think, I think he should feel good. You know, they played well in the first half, just missed a couple of field goals, played well in defense, but now down 21 nothing, they have got to get some points on the board offensively. They've got it at their own 36. This is their best starting field position. Here's Jordan Rogers going deep downfield, has Kraus, and just overshot it. Off the fingertips of Jonathan Kraus. That would have been a huge play. Execution. You're going to see a double move on the outside. Kraus runs a stutter go on Kirkpatrick, runs right by him. This ball maybe put a little more air under it, but Kraus has got to come up with that football. This is the big play that Vanderbilt needed to get a little bit of momentum, and Kraus just couldn't finish. And that's been the M.O. for this wide receiver unit all year. These guys just have not been able to finish plays. Just another missed opportunity for James Franklin's team and there have been several here comes pressure Rogers escapes still looking downfield throws it out to Barden the tight end a gain of four here have here are some of the missed opportunities the field goals really stand out yeah they had a chance to go in at halftime down seven to six if they make these field goals and get a stop in a two minute drill but not able to convert Spear on either one of these tries and start to wonder about the confidence and the kicker James Franklin even though Spear was three of three coming into the game on the season he has not been able to convert third down at six Vanderbilt just one third down conversion tonight it's been an Achilles heel this year 20 percent Rogers Incomplete. Great coverage by Mark Barron. The safety. Dante Hightower also made that play happen because he got good pressure on the quarterback. I'll tell you, you get in a third down and five or more against this Alabama defense, and you're just asking for pain and trouble here. The quarterbacks get hit. Highsmith, good, clean hit there. They did that repeatedly to John Brantley a week ago. They did it to Tyler Wilson from Arkansas the week before that. If you're a quarterback playing Alabama, you do not want to be in third long situations because you're going to get blitzed. <laughs> you're going to have to throw the ball into zone dropping linebackers and coverage. You're going to have nowhere to go with the football. And on top of all that, you're going to get your head knocked off. 39th, three and out forced. You're going to have to delay a game. Damn. That leads the nation in forced three and outs. And that's what really separates Alabama defensively. I mean, everybody talks about how physical they are and that they can uh, dominate the line of scrimmage. When you get in third down, Kirby Smart, Nick Saban, they are genius at diagnosing and drawing up blitzes that will get to your quarterback but play zone conservative coverage behind it. And that is the key to their success. Mays at the 15-yard line is going to watch this drop. He's going to field it on the hop. And only going to get a Ford yard return after the 51 yard punt. Now Trent Richardson gets a touchdown, capping a long Alabama drive, and the defense is in midseason form. 21 0 them. This is a Tuscaloosa landmark, Dreamland Barbecue. I tell you what, you know the food's good when you don't even take time to put the bib on, you know? You get so excited, you got somebody <laughs> helping you put the bib on. Say thank you there. We had it yesterday. How good was that? Oh. Huh? Did you Don't wear forget. a bib? No. <laughs> I can't. My tie is my bib. <laughs> Sunday and Monday, BCS Countdown, 8.15 Eastern on ESPN, and then at 9 o'clock, turn around and play it again for you on ESPNU and then you'll see it again on Monday if you missed it on Sunday. BCS countdown of course that first BCS poll comes out here uh, next week. 
Oklahoma was impressive today. How impressive yeah. was LSU? I don't know if Oklahoma was as impressive as Texas was disappointing. I mean, it yeah. was complete disintegration. What did Alabama do for an encore? What an impressive first drive to start the half. Now they're incomplete on first down. Mays, the intended receiver. Let's go to the studio for an update. And he's Shroff here with his Sports Center in game update. Georgia freshman Isaiah Crowell punching it in. And it's the Dogs with a 13 6 lead on Tennessee. 8 12 to play in the third. Play. Big game in the SEC East, which is wide open. Thank you, Anish. Second down and 10 for Alabama. After a 94 yard touchdown drive on 12 plays to start the second half. Richardson hit the backfield, gets away. And almost got back to the line of scrimmage. Garnum hits him for a loss of two. Greenstone, the defensive tackle, just beats Vallejos up the field. And you know one thing about Vanderbilt's defensive line, and Bob Shoup told us this yesterday, they are going to play hard for 60 minutes. I don't care what the score is. These guys are going to rotate nine guys in on the defensive line. They have got a lot of pride. They're going to come off the football. They are not going to give in to Alabama. This is a team that beat the reigning Big East champs, UConn, already this year. Have an SEC win after a victory over Ole Miss. Third down and 12, McCarron to Mays. Has blockers and has a first down. Out to the 35, a gain of 29 for Marquise Mays. I tell you, take a look at this job on this play from the center of Vallejos. Gonna come out on the screen and lead him. He's right in the middle. Go ahead and run it, guys. He gets out, gets downfield. He's gonna try to hit anybody he can. Hits one guy, knocks him down. Two guys, knocks him down. Let me find another guy, knock him down. Vallejos an all SEC performer. He was a player of the week for SEC offensive lineman last week for a job he did against Florida. And he's the unquestioned leader of this Alabama offensive line. Play fake, McCarron, plenty of time. Passes too high. Kevin Norwood, the sophomore receiver, the intended target, incomplete second and 10. They kind of pick on Vallejos too, though. They like him so much, but they pick on him, and I think that's because they like him. <laughs> well, he's not the tallest guy in the world. He's only 6'1", <laughs> but uh, he's got a low center of gravity, and the thing about him, he's been consistent. This is his 33rd consecutive start, and uh, he started every single game going all the way back to the start of the 2009 season. Richardson, beautiful run. And another first down for Alabama. Let's go down to Allison. Well, guys, when we talked to Trent Richardson yesterday, he said that's what he loves about Vallejos. He's one of those guys that gets downfield, always looking to make the block. He said, heck, sometimes I think he's trying to race me to the end zone. And it's a, he's a guy that they really seem to like a lot. And Richardson loves his offensive lineman. And, and Vallejo's kind of the leader there. And I think uh, May's appreciating his hard work as well. He's got the sprinter shorts on. Look at those. <laughs> those he's got hard. knee pads for thigh pads He's, he wants to get as much speed and uh, aerodynamic as he can I think he's keeping <laughs> those pants in the dryer too long <laughs> they're awfully short now McCarron is flushed out looking downfield throws on the run did he stay in for a catch yeah beautiful play on the sideline Brandon Gibson his first catch of the night and he picks up 12 A.J. McCarron has just enough mobility to be dangerous. He escapes the rush inside. On the move, you've got to be accurate as a quarterback. That ball right on Gibson, who ran a nice patient route, got separation, and comes down with that catch for a first down. McCarron is putting balls where only his receivers can catch him tonight. He's confident tonight. He's come out and played really well. 180 yards through the air, 21 of 28 with a couple of touchdowns. That's an efficient night. You see the total yards now at 321. More Yards coming for Richardson, short game, but he's got his fifth straight 100-yard game here tonight, the ninth of his career. Richardson now 18 carries for 107. It's almost a given you come into a game where Richardson's going to get his 100 yards, and uh, the thing that's been impressive is his average. That's what I look at with running backs is what they average per carry, and he's up around six, six yards a carry tonight. 
done most of his damage here in the second half was held to 32 yards on the ground in the first half. And he'll get it again on second and eight looking for operating room on the right side and there is DeAndre Jones the middle linebacker to bring him down at the 40. Jones plays behind Chris Marv for the most part. We're under a minute and a half to go here third quarter as Alabama has a comfortable lead now 21 to nothing. You know going back to McCarron the one thing coming into this game we talked with coach Saban about it yesterday was he's an emotional player last week he got into a little bit of a tiff with Dominique Easley uh, he got a little too excited after a touchdown and Nick Saban had to settle him down he's a very passionate emotional player and Nick Saban says I need to keep him focused in a lot of situations he certainly has been even keel tonight I'm third and seven he steps up deep downfield to the end zone Touchdown White, his second touchdown catch here tonight. From 39 yards up. They need DeAndre White to step up. But a great job here. McCarron stepping up in the pocket, avoiding the rush, knowing when to take a shot downfield and throw the ball, give Andrew DeAndre White an opportunity to go up and make a play. And Shelley missed the extra point. Jeremy Shelley pushed it wide right. And it's 27 to nothing. DeAndre White, the freshman from Houston, expected to be a vertical threat in the future. Well, I think the future is now for Alabama. Anish Roff here in studio. Landry Jones of Oklahoma is an AT&T All-America Player of the Week nominee. The Oklahoma quarterback threw for 367 yards, three TDs, had more than 300 yards passing in the first half as the Sooners blast Texas 55-17 in the Red River rivalry. Vote 55862 from your mobile phone to vote and for a chance at a trip to the national championship. Okay, Anish, thank you very much. Back here in Tuscaloosa, there is DeAndre White. Just kind of beautiful touchdown pass from McCarron. McCarron now. 220 yards through the air. That is just six yards shy of a season high. Caps a nine play, 81 yard drive. So a 96 yard drive followed up by an 81 yard drive by Alabama to start the half. Foster to the 10. That's where Clark takes it. Stephen Clark getting his first return tonight across the 30 yard line a couple more looks at that last touchdown pass yeah great protection allows them to take a shot down the field and sometimes just got to step up a little bit move around a little bit in the pocket to find a lane and then like to see that ball thrown down the field a little bit more but the Andrew White does a nice job coming back to the football the thing about White he's got a lot of talent a lot of speed is he physical enough to be an every down wide receiver in the SEC Julio Jones was a freak of nature for Alabama was able to go up and make plays all over the field now they need somebody to step up is it Marquise Mays he didn't really have the skill set to be that kind of receiver the Andrew White's got the size and the speed to be able to do it 44 seconds to go in the quarter Jordan Rogers in a quarterback for Vandy since the first half Wesley Tate makes the catch gets it to the 43 yard line before Hightower brings him down it's a first down a gain of 12 Larry Smith knocked out of this game with a leg injury of some sort for Vandy and Jordan Rogers is running the offense there is Smith it's obvious that uh, he's probably not coming back in. He is helping shuttle in the signals. Look at the total yards in the third quarter. Alabama has come out of the locker room and completely dominated. And he steps out close to midfield. Five seconds to go.
Think Nick Saban's feeling a little bit better now? <laughs> Hard to tell, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Holding number 69 on the offense. Penalty 10 yards from the previous spot. First down. Josh Jaleski, the right guard. Well, Nick Saban is nothing if not consistent. I mean, we talked with him yesterday. Every single day he does the same thing, wakes up at the same time, has the same uh, cup of coffee for breakfast. There's two little Debbie cakes, and then you'll have another cup of coffee, turn on the weather channel. He said, I don't know why I turn the weather channel on, because I always stay in a dark room and watch film all day long, but I have to turn <laughs> it on because I'm just a creature of habit. So he likes things a particular way. He's a perfectionist. Uh, and he's certainly, uh, throughout his career, it's paid off for him. Well, even though it might not show, he must be more pleased with Alabama's play in that third quarter. Complete domination. And they have opened up a 27 to nothing lead in this game. score doesn't reflect it now but this game was close for a half AJ McCarron has been good running this Alabama offense he has 220 yards passing a couple of missed field goals in the first half by Casey Spear and Vanderbilt still scoreless in this football game as Wesley Tate makes that catch for Vandy Mark Barron another punishing tackle the third quarter completely dominated by Alabama. They controlled the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball in that quarter. Well, I think that was a, kind of a result of the uh, conversation at halftime that Nick Saban, Kirby Smart, probably had with his defense and with his team about not playing down to the competition, but having a certain level of expectation for perfection. Screen play to Zach Stacy, and Alabama was ready for it. There is Mark Barron. Who else? Man, it's like he's cheating off your paper. He knows what's coming before it happens. <laughs> well, he, he, there he is right here. He's just going to diagnose the screenplay, the offensive line. This is the old trick him. Let the, all the defensive linemen come up the field. But Mark Barron is not fooled. He's so smart, and yeah. he's so good at playing that center field position, reading defenses. He studies hard during the week. Uh, he's one of the better safeties I've seen in college football in a long, long time. Good bet he's going to be a three-time All-American after this year's level. Third and 16 for Vanderbilt. They've converted just once on third down here tonight. Rodgers picked off. D. Milliner. Barron in front of him. Inside the 15. A 35-yard interception return setting Alabama up for another score. Yeah, and that was too easy for Milner. This ball just thrown into double coverage. Rodgers forcing this, trying to get back into this football game with one throw and throws right into two deep double zone coverage, and that's an easy pick for Milner. And again, another interception for Alabama. The last two games, they've had interception returns for touchdowns. That one almost went all the way back. And they're going to say he was actually out at the 20-yard line. So that's where Bama has it first down and 10. As James Franklin talks with his quarterback. Yeah, he's telling him right there that you cannot throw that ball into too deep coverage. you got to work the strong side of the field. He was on the wrong side, and he'll learn. Problem is, he's going to learn the hard way against Alabama. This is Charleston Fowler. Again, no Eddie Lacy. He's out with some turf toe, so Fowler getting more carries tonight. Colt Nichter pushed him out of bounds. I thought it was interesting what the, Jim McElwain said about Fowler as you take a look at how Alabama has performed in the fourth quarter. I mean, it's been 45 to 8 in the scoring, and, and look at the yardage. It's just, and it's a, it's a representative of what Nick Saban's all about, his fourth quarter program for conditioning that he has in the offseason, the way that they finished games a year ago, three yeah. those three losses they lost in the fourth quarter. And the one that really hurt, they were up 24 0 against Auburn, lost 28 27. And the placard in the football building says, never again.
27 nothing Vanderbilt time now for our game track presented by Taco Bell and the challenge for Alabama coming into this game was not to have a letdown after an emotional win against Florida and Arkansas and they have come out and played with that intensity and focus in the second half specifically and Vanderbilt has missed opportunities two missed field goals from their kicker and then after halftime Alabama just came out yeah. dedicated to running the football and then mix it up a little bit try to get this passing game alive for them they can use it down the road in the SEC because they're going to need it. And Nick Saban is shuffling up some of his personnel now as they've got it at the 20 yard line. Yeah they're going to change up a little bit on the offensive line the big left tackle Cyrus Quanjo number 71 very highly recruited uh, athlete probably the number two overall recruit in the nation behind Jadavion Clowney uh, from South Carolina but he is a talented young man that they would love to get involved at the left tackle position sooner rather than later. Second down and nine from the 20 yard line. They give it to Fowler. And he picks up three yards. Here's a game track presented by Taco Bell 27 to nothing. Uh, Richardson 107 rushing yards in the touchdown at halftime though he only had 32 He really turned it on in that third quarter. Yeah he certainly did but uh, A.J. McCarron's really been the one that's been impressive tonight. Very efficient, moving the football, 22 of 29. He's got three touchdowns on the night. That's not what he's going to do every single week for Alabama, but when they needed him tonight, he was there for them. Third down and eight. To the end zone touchdown, Darius Hanks. Game management, my eye. McCarron is sharp. Vanderbilt had no safety in the middle of the field again. You'll see McCarron gets a little bit of pressure. He's got to get rid of this football. Hanks runs a great route, patient, and with no safety in the middle of the field, both Hanks and McCarron knew that that was going to be stealing. Shelley missed his last extra point attempt. And this time, no such thing. 34 to nothing, Crimson Tide. Take a look at this route from Hanks. Patience sticks it on the outside. Last four drives, four touchdowns for Bama. PNU College Football Prime Time is presented by Five Hour Energy. Five Hour Energy fixes tired fast. Visit fivehourenergy.com. Play Matthew, Brian Greasy, Allison Williams back here in Tuscaloosa. AJ McCarron has been called a quintessential game manager. Well, Brian, tonight he has done more than that. He has led this offense. Will you stop using the game manager monitor? That's what they I mean, say. That's who's what they? they say. Who's they? You quarterbacks whoever are they, too sensitive. Whoever they is doesn't know what they are talking about. <laughs> game management, this is not a game manager. You play quarterback in the SEC at Alabama. I know you have a great defense. I know you got a Heisman Trophy candidate at running back. If they're going to win the national championship, A.J. McCarron is going to need to be a playmaker. And there's going to be a point in time where they're going to need him. Greg McElroy was a playmaker, okay? He made plays. I don't know he had Julio Jones and all these guys. But in my opinion, there is no game management in the SEC at a program like Alabama. I'll just go on the record on that one. I was going to say, it sounded like you, you almost took that personal. W were you ever called a game manager? Listen, I had a good defense in college. Yeah, and we won the national championship. They ever called me a game manager. <laughs> I got to the sore spot. Right. At the 17, it's taken by Hal. And a short return out to the 24-yard line. Let's go for an update on Arkansas-Auburn. Anish. Clay, it's now 21 unanswered for Arkansas. Joe Adams is going to take this 92 yards to the house. Razorbacks up 28-14. Now, remember last year, Arkansas led Auburn in the fourth quarter, but the Tigers closed the game with 28 unanswered. And yeah, we'll have to see if Auburn's got it in them this year. Of course, uh, Alabama will play their vaunted rivals on the 26th of November in the 
regular season finale. Yeah. Auburn is just good enough to be dangerous, you know what I mean? But I know that they will have the full attention of Alabama in the Iron Bowl. That will be uh, fun as always. Rodgers who stumbles and about the 25 yard line and falls ahead to the 29 a run of five. Don't forget Palmer and Pollock Monday at 1 and 9 Eastern on ESPNU. This is uh, the first year of the Palmer and Pollock show. What are your impressions of those two guys on the air every week? I mean they jab at each other back and forth kind of like you and I. Nah. Maybe not that bad. <laughs> I'll take Pollock in that jab fest. <laughs> <laughs> Palmer soft. <laughs> Ahead, Seymour. And Trey DePriest, the middle linebacker, makes the tackle a gain of three. It's gonna be about third and two coming up for Vandy. Nick Saban in his Fifth year as Alabama's head coach, two division titles, one SEC title, one national championship here at Bama. The only active coach with two national titles and at different schools to boot. A lot of people think he could be getting another one here this year. Well, they're certainly going to have their opportunities if they continue to get better on a weekly basis. And Nick Saban knows how to motivate his team. He will have them ready to play, in my opinion. Rodgers gets away from a tackle, throws on the run, and right into the hands of Nico Johnson. Second interception thrown by Rodgers. Talk about the talent that uh, Alabama has at the linebacker position. C.J. Mosley goes down and Nico Johnson comes in and says, all right, well, I can play man-to-man -man coverage on one of the fastest players on Vanderbilt's team. Look at him stick with the receiver there and just get his eyes around. That's the difference between Alabama teams. In my opinion, one of the biggest differences is in defense. When they play team defense, they get their eyes back to the quarterback, whether it's zone coverage or man coverage. And Nick Saban was talking to us yesterday. When they're in phase with the receiver, DBs, linebackers get their head turned around and make the play on the football. Great job by Nico Johnson. Last two passes for Rodgers have resulted in interceptions. Fowler the carry he'll pick up two on first down and a new quarterback is in for the Crimson Tide Philip Sims the red shirt freshman out of Chesapeake Virginia he has played in every game uh, albeit not as much as he would like as A.J. McCarron has won that starting job yeah and people didn't really get to see a whole lot of Philip Sims because uh, in spring practice practice closed and saw a little bit of in the spring game but he's got an arm he can throw the football this race was tight I think that uh, the little bit of experience that McCarron had coming into this season was what gave him the edge, but Sims can play. He'll hand off. And Fowler tries to cut back, and he is hard to bring down. He has proven that tonight. Gain of seven. It's going to bring up third and a couple. Sims, the number one quarterback in the nation on that ESPNU 150 in 2010 out of Oscar Smith High School in Virginia. And Greenstone, the defensive tackle, is down. We'll step aside. 34 0 Crimson Tide. And he's Shroff here in studio. BYU quarterback Ryan e. Riley Nelson making his first start of the year. BYU and San Jose State comes your way at 10 30 Eastern on ESPNU. Earlier today, LSU, number one in the nation, rolling over Florida 41 to 11 in Death Valley. The Tigers have now defeated four ranked opponents. And how about Oklahoma pounding Texas 55 to 17, the final OU, three defensive touchdowns. Sports Center right now brought to you by Discover. All right, and these two very impressive victories for Oklahoma and LSU today. 9.42 to go. Alabama on third and short. Sims hands off for Fowler. And it's going to depend on the spot. Here's our quest for the coaches trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. A closer look at that LSU win today. Jacoby Brissett had to play quarterback today for Florida because both quarterbacks that play ahead of him knocked out last week by the Crimson Tide. 
you play Alabama and you're going to feel it for a couple of weeks. I mean, Arkansas yeah. felt it for a couple of weeks and uh, Florida certainly is as well. You know, Florida going up against two of the best defenses in back to back. It's tough. Well, they gave it to him first down and 10 for Alabama. Phillip Sims in a quarterback play fake. Wants to throw and he checks down to Blake Sims. His first touch tonight. First down catch. Now, no, they're going to mark him back. A three yards short. Here's that Crimson Tide schedule. The big one coming up on November 5th right here in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, they got a, it's very favorable. They don't play South Carolina this year. They replaced them with Vanderbilt, but they go on the road to Ole Miss, Tennessee at home, and then the big game uh, after a bye week uh, against LSU. And as you look, Alabama took another step, in my opinion, tonight. Kind of just sharpening the blade, getting everything fine-tuned in all three phases for that November 5th showdown. Second and two, Blake Sims reverses field, and he's going to lose yards. The former high school quarterback takes a loss of two. And another thing that now LSU's got to worry about tonight is DeAndre White. White, before now, really uh, kind of quiet in that receiving court. Two big touchdown catches in this game. Well, DeAndre White and, frankly, A.J. McCarron. I thought it was big tonight. I felt coming in this game, Jim McElwain might free up the reins a little bit, let McCarron throw the ball some more just to get his confidence up and, and send LSU a message. Hey, you just can't pile up on Trent Richardson. We're going to make you pay through the air, too. Phillip Sims. Happy feet and down. He is sacked at the 28-yard line by Walker made the defensive end. It's a loss of eight. You know, Vandy, through the first half, got to give him a lot of credit. And this Vanderbilt team already has three victories. Now, you look at their schedule, and they're going to have to try and find three more wins to become bowl eligible in James Franklin's first year. And I got to tell you, they certainly have a defense that's formidable enough to get it going and find those wins. It's the offense that they need to get going. Uh, yeah, I've been impressed tonight with Rodgers, their quarterback. He, you know, who knows how long Larry Smith will be out, but I think Rodgers has some tools to, to do it. Sims to Sims. And he will not get the first down. Gain of nine. And Fandy will take over on downs. 7.05 to go. Nick Saban has got to be happy with the way his team has come out in the second half and played. And while it hasn't been perfect all night for him, and I know he's a perfectionist and he likes to be perfect, uh, just like a week ago, I think he's going to have a lot to teach from from this film, and it's another step in the right direction. He's always coached, no matter what the score is, and he's got high expectations for Blake Sims, just a true freshman. He wants to see him get north and south, up the field. A little too much dancing on that last fourth down play. And we actually saw him smile not that long ago. Yeah, but that was in a commercial break, so it didn't count. <laughs> Rogers, incomplete. Now his counterpart, James Franklin, knew he had a lot when he took on this Vanderbilt job. But I'll say this about it. He's already making a splash on the recruiting trail. Yeah. Tom Luganville, who's walking around here tonight, has him ranked 25th as far as his recruiting class coming in. Well, and I, I didn't know this coming into the game, but I guess they rank the coaches in the country in recruiting. Like, the, each coach will get a rank. Huh. And so Tom was telling me that, and James Franklin has been a top 25 recruiter for the past two years. I didn't even, I mean, I know they rank quarterbacks and teams. I didn't know they rank coaches for recruiting. They rank everything. <laughs> Seymour out across the 30 to the 32. It's a gain of 13. And speaking of Mr. Luganville, he's down with Allison. Guys, yes, I'm here with Tom Luganville, National Director of Recruiting for ESPN. He's been here hanging out, twittering for us. And Tom, the guys were just talking about the performance by James Franklin on the recruiting trail this year. Top 25 class for Vanderbilt. How did he do it? It's about energy. It's about enthusiasm. And when you're at a place like Vanderbilt where you have some inherent challenges, it's about being creative. 
And when you take a helicopter on a recruiting trip, it's about making headlines, and that's being creative. They know they've got challenges ahead of them. They've done a great job in state with their recruiting. I think that's what's really made the dent so far, and they've done it in the trenches, offensive line and defensive line, two positions that are hard to find. Yeah, he made some news with taking that helicopter to a couple of Georgia games. He said it was because, you know, he had to do some recruiting in Maryland and the big city atmosphere needed to be two places in the same night. But certainly got some attention for this program. Who in that class are the big standouts for Vanderbilt? I think there's two guys that stand out to me. Steven Weatherly, the defensive end, is a guy that's of SEC caliber when you look at defensive linemen, and he's an edge pass rusher. Brian Kimbrough on the offensive side of the football is a lightning quick weapon. He's going to be great in the spread offense, get him in space, allow him to do what he does. And those are the types of players that in the past have not considered Vanderbilt. I think that more than anything else is he's got players thinking about Vanderbilt, and that hasn't happened before. He certainly does. It seems like he's brought a whole lot of energy to a program that has kind of lacked it. And we've seen it with programs like Stanford that have had success and still have the high academic standards. So those guys, those athletes are out there. Well, they're out there and you got to scour the entire country. You become a national recruiter when you're at an academic institution. And I think with it, with enhanced resources, enhanced facilities, and the sales pitch to, hey, come be a part of the resurgence. Come be a part of the class that 10 years from now, people look back and they say this was the group that started the climb and if that's what you're selling and it's working and the way James Franklin speaks when you hear him you're sold he's that type of guy all right Tom thanks so much you bet guys Allison Tom thanks a lot and uh, it's gonna bring a fourth down down on the field I'll never forget the first time I met James Frank we were at the SEC media days and I was in an elevator going down uh, to, to talk to Nick Saban about his team and uh, the elevator door opened. This guy walked in and stood next to me. We went down about eight floors. And as soon as he walked in, he said, Hi, hey, how you doing? My name's James Franklin. I didn't even know who James Franklin was. But I think he was trying to recruit me. If I didn't have so much gray hair, he might have tried to sign me. <laughs> He's just that kind of guy. He'll talk to anybody. He is infectious, that's for sure. Young guy that uh, is very excited to be in Nashville. This is a short punt and a shanked punt by Richard Kent. 4.36 to go. Alabama ready to go to 6 0. Good stuff. <clears throat> Finally got Lugs on. Do we? The SEC on ESPN from Tuscaloosa tonight. Homecoming night for the Crimson Tide. It was a little bit of a slow start, but got things rolling here in the second half. And A.J. McCarron, very impressive tonight. Four touchdown passes, a season high, 237 yards through the air. He's our Wrangler, five-star player of the game. And I thought emotionally he was very even keel tonight. Didn't get too high last week. Uh, Nick Saban had a few choice words for him to settle down after a touchdown. So if he can continue to deliver that kind of performance and maintain his emotions, well, this Alabama team will be hard to beat. Blake Sims will get three on that first down carry. You know, what is the what is the biggest challenge for Saban when it comes to controlling his emotions, do you feel? Oh, at the quarterback position, well, you don't want to completely squash because passion is good at the quarterback position. You just don't want that passion uh, to, to take away the focus that you need to play the position to go through your reads and to be focused and organized in how you run the offense. So, uh, But I think that passion can be good. It can rally your team, get your offensive linemen especially uh, motivated to play, and you don't want to coach that out of them. Sims. Caught from behind a gain of two. Let's go to the studio for an update. All right, Clay, coming up in a little more than 20 minutes, San Jose State and Bolitnikoff Award watch list member Noel Grigsby will take on BYU. That's at 1030 Eastern on ESPNU. Grigsby, one of the top wideouts in the nation. All right, Anisha, I hope Dave Diaz Infante is impartial tonight. He's a, a San Jose State grad. He's on the broadcast here tonight on the U. Good shout out for Doc. Yeah, he protected you at one time, didn't he? 
inside the 40 yard line ball comes loose and Alabama recovers that Sims with a five yard gain and a first down as we're coming up on three minutes to go next week Alabama's at Ole Miss then they come home to take on Tennessee then LSU November 5th here in Tuscaloosa Plenty of time for Sims, complete, and then dropped. I'm going to say that's a live ball. They're calling it a completion. Fumbled ahead. Harrison Jones had it, dropped it, and it was recovered by White. Good throw here by Sims. Last two plays that this offense has been loose with the football, and uh, thankfully DeAndre White is there to, uh, to recover that ball. I don't think that Nick Saban would be happy with a turnover at this point in Alabama would ruin their streak now they've had 37 offensive possessions without a turnover that is impressive and they got seven of the year but most of those happened the first game or two and Sims with another run picks up one Monday's on ESPN you Jesse Palmer David Pollock on the three hour extravaganza known as the Palmer and Pollock show on ESPN one and 9 Eastern every Monday. Alabama is going to start 6-0 for the third time in the last four years. Again, uh, Nick Saban was hoping his team wouldn't let down as they did in game six of the year last year against South Carolina. Of course, that was on the road against a much tougher opponent. But nonetheless, I'm going to win this game. Tackle in the backfield, Sims drop for a loss by Al Owens and I, re I really think the 2011 season for Alabama started uh, January 1st in the Capital One Bowl when they beat Michigan State 49 to 7 they were embarrassed losing three times during the course of last season and uh, I think Nick Saban used that time off over the holidays to really motivate his team and say look we have got to build some momentum they lost a lot of players on defense after that national championship team in 09. They did an inexperience last year on defense, but 10 out of 11 starters returned for them on defense this year, and they're playing with more confidence, more character, more leadership, and it's showing. On third down, it'll be Blake Sims, and it'll bring him fourth down and long with 46 seconds to go. You know, Sports Illustrated had Alabama on the cover this week. Asking the question, is this the best defense ever? What do you think? No, no, not anywhere close at this point. I mean, it's five games into the season. They've played well, don't get me wrong, especially against the run coming into this game. But, uh, you know, I think that Leroy Jordan and some of those guys from the old school Alabama teams, even back in 1961, you know how many points that Leroy Jordan's defense yeah. gave up over 11 games? 25 total. Ooh. So let's quiet down the best ever Alabama defense. Now Vanderbilt will take over on downs, but just nine seconds to go. And Alabama is going to get ready to celebrate its sixth win of the year. There's nine seconds left, and James Franklin has basically already conceded. He's not ready to shake hands. We told you he's enthusiastic. <laughs> he's ready to get out of Tuscaloosa and not come back for a while. Nine seconds to go in this game. We're not done with the SEC on ESPN. Boy, a hot time in the town tonight. These uh, homecoming fans ready to celebrate another victory for the Crimson Tide. What a great day it was today for homecoming. Beautiful day. Had a parade. Had all kinds of things going on. And tail, tailgating started last night. Went for a run. And everybody was out tailgating. You went for a run? Yeah. That's what you know people do. You ever done that? No. Oh. I'm no. Try it one time. <laughs> that's why I stay away from my doctor. <laughs> and that's going to do it. Alabama goes to 6-0. I'll be at Ole Miss next week. Vanderbilt. Drops to three and two. Alabama has held an opponent under 300 yards for the ninth time in 10 games.
We will be back to recap this game, but for now, we go back to the studio and Anish Shroff. The final, 34 to nothing. The number two team in the country, Alabama, with a homecoming win. Anish, take it away. All right, thank you very much, Clay. Don't forget, coming up in about 15 minutes, San Jose State and BYU. Riley Nelson getting the start at quarterback for the Cougars. Played well in last week's comeback win for the Cougs. And with that, we say hello. Welcome to Sports Center. You alongside Jason Seahorn and Rod Gilmore. I'm in a Shroff. Alabama, an impressive second half. They shut out Vanderbilt to go to 6-0. It's Bama and LSU, one and two in the nation. LSU won, Bama two, LSU earlier today, taking on Florida, who just had Alabama a week ago. And you got a feel for the Florida quarterback. John Brantley, he's on the sideline, suffered an ankle injury against Bama. Jeff Driscoll, the freshman, was supposed to start. He's hurt as well, got hurt against Bama. So Jacoby Brissett, first start as a quarterback, true freshman, he's got to go against oh, LSU. That is not the way to be introduced in your college football career. Meanwhile, second offensive play of the game, LSU, Jarrett Lee, Reuben Randall. He's starting to find the range, starting to look comfortable with the quarterback spot what for LSU. Game manager, what happened? All right, fake punt, Brad Wing. Where's the punt coverage? No I punt got a funny feeling this was just something Brad saw. You know what, I think I can run on this one. All right, so now this is the punter scoring a touchdown, but, but. He does what a punter does. The wrong thing at the <laughs> wrong time. Act like you've been there before. That yeah, was taunt. taunting. It was called unsportsmanlike conduct. Oh. New rule this year now. If you do that while the play is still ongoing, it's a live ball foul. That means that touchdown comes off the board. It's rule 9-2-1. New this year. They're differenti uh, differentiating between live ball and dead ball. Just wait until you cross the line, have your dance, take the 15-yard penalty. He's a punter. He's points. never been there before, exactly. right? <laughs> Uh -huh. uh, so instead of a touchdown, ends up being a field goal. And then uh, later, more from uh, Tyron Matthew, the Honey Badger. Two DBs here on set. Honey like Badger for I Heisman. See. Like what I said. Not for Heisman. There's too much offensive talent this year. But as a defensive player of the year, absolutely right. Big time player. He is the top defensive player in the country. Gentlemen, 41 to 11. LSU wins. They've now beaten four ranked teams this season. Handily. Handily. They're number one. There was a lot of talk last week, maybe Alabama being number one. Who's number one? I mean, the case is going to be there until they play each other. Yeah. I still like LSU. Like you said, the, the schedule they've had to go through, the gauntlet they've run, and the way they've beaten these teams. Alabama on the other side is still figuring th things out on offense. Defensively, that's going to be a bloodbath. I agree. I, I think um, LSU, Alabama, flip a coin right now. I don't think it matters nope. which one is number one right now. They're in the same conference, same division. We'll get to see them play in November. But right now, it sure is fun to watch them. A great defense play like that. Love that. They are on a collision yeah. course. Two teams in the SEC West, both rolling along. LSU and Bama, both unbeaten. Right now, we get you back out to Tuscaloosa. And let's go to Clay Matvick with more on Bama's big win against Vandy. All right, Anish, thank you very much. Second shutout of the homecoming night. Greece, what stood out for you the most in this game? Well, I think defensively, Alabama kind of started slow, but they got their rhythm. And then offensively, A.J. McCarron, I thought, was fantastic in the third quarter, was very efficient, four touchdowns on the night. If he can get his rhythm with those receivers, they can start to make plays. I think they have the edge over LSU. Well, they certainly showed it, especially on the defensive side of the ball, and Mark Barron was a big part of that. He's downstairs with Allison. Thank you very much, Mark. A 34-0 shutout here at your homecoming game against Vanderbilt. How does that one feel? Well, you know, it's a good win. You know, it's always good to, to get the fans a good show at homecoming. And then, you know, it's a great win for us. It's an SEC win, you know, so that's always good. It seemed in the first half Vanderbilt was able to move the ball well, but you kept them off the board. What adjustments did you need to make in the second half? Um, I mean, we didn't really make any adjustments as far as our game plan. You know, it just, we weren't executing it in the first half. And, you know, we just had to get settled down and, and get everybody's mind right, you know, in the locker room. And, you know, we came back out and we played a better half in the second half. Coach Saban did say before the half that there was a lack of focus, a lack of execution. Why do you think that was? Uh, I mean, I'm not sure. I couldn't really tell you, but, you know, we, we didn't come out and play, you know, the way we usually play. But, you know, we did. We, we went in and got that change at halftime and we came out and played better in the second half. Mark, thanks for the time. All right, you're welcome. All right, now the uh, team is 6-0 and 
Everybody's already looking ahead to the November 5th game against LSU here in Tuscaloosa. Do you see them potentially slipping up before that match? Well, they go to that Ole Miss. I don't think I, they're going to have an issue there. Tennessee yeah. comes into Tuscaloosa. That'll get their attention with Tyler Bray. Then they have a bye week. I think they're going to use the next three weeks to really sharpen the blade and, and get their mind right for LSU on November 5th. And like I said, if, if they're able to throw the football effectively, convert on third downs like they did tonight. Tonight they were 12 of 17 on third down and then add in Trent Richardson and a heavy diet of that. Uh, LSU is going to have all they can handle here in Tuscaloosa. And they're going to have that extra week of time to prepare for LSU before the Tigers come in on November 5th. Trent Richardson, another 100-yard rushing game, 107 on the night. Now let's go back to the studio and a niche. Kyle Van Noy, BYU's defensive menace. Two fumble returns for a touchdown. He and the Cougars, less than nine and a half away from kickoff as they take on San Jose State, 10:30 on ESPNU.